Well, Mr. Edwards, thank you for a happy tune on a gloomy day to get us in this place. <laughs> Welcome. I'm glad to see all of you here this morning. Equally delighted to have those of you joining us online to be worshiping with us that way today. A special word of welcome to visitors in both places. We're particularly grateful for your presence with us, and we hope that you find this time of worship together to be meaningful. Uh, a couple of notes uh, for, to make that makes today a little bit different if you're visiting with us. Our organ um, does not like water, it turs out, and is in the middle of a, a fairly extensive renovation. So uh, please enjoy our piano today. And I'm sorry you won't be able to hear the organ quite yet. Uh, and today we do welcome uh, James Cooper uh, to the church, a councilman for the area in which you are seated uh, from 23rd Street all the way up to Britain Road, I understand. So. Uh, we thank you for your presence with us and uh, the time that you spent sharing with us this morning. Uh, we do have an evensong service, I hope you're aware of, on Wednesdays. It's a half hour of contemplative prayer to then an evensong ser worship service. And then we have a 30-minute break before choir. So we are going to begin this week uh, offering refreshments during that time uh, to tide you over. So if you would like to come uh, have a little bit of time of contemplation and worship prior to choir, uh, please feel free to do that. And we will even give you some nourishment so you'll be in good form for puffer. Uh, choir does start this week, and um, we would be delighted to have any of you who would like to participate in that. Uh, please do. You can see puffer after the service today if you have any questions about that. Let us now prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Please rise now in body or spirit, however you're comfortable, and join me in the call to worship. Give thanks to God with all your heart. The Lord is gracious and merciful to us. Let us worship God. Shall awaken, we shall arise at the 
morning. Let's do the prayer of today in unison, please. Living God, you sustained our ancestors with manna in the wilderness. Fill us with the gift of everlasting life so we may rise on the last day through Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. Call confession. Hear the words of the prophet Isaiah. In repentance and rest is your salvation. In quietness and trust is your strength. But you would have none of it. Yet the Lord longs to be gracious to you. He rises to show you compassion. For the Lord is God of justice. Blessed are all who wait for him. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbors in unison. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your way. You bestowed the gift of wisdom, yet we continue in our foolishness. You provide the bread of life, yet we persist in the ways of death. Forgive us, God of grace. Help us to make better use of the lives you have given us, giving glory to you in all things. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds, we have been healed. I declare to you in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Amen. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. To this peace we are called as members of a single body. The peace of Christ be with you. disciples, I know you're going to walk down to the steps, aren't you? <clears throat> Where is everybody? We had more people than this before. All right, so we were up we were upstairs. We were talking about that school starts this week. Yay, right? <laughs> Yay. Whoa, Thursday, Wednesday. 
we're pretty excited, but at the same time, we might have some worries. We might have some worries, right? We were saying that you had some worries. We're worried about friends and teachers and lockers, getting them open and things like that. So um, I have a little secret for you. Are you looking at me? Anybody looking at me? Ruby, looking at me? I have a little secret for you. Teachers get worried too. They really do. When I was a teacher in New Jersey, we didn't start school till September. And around this time of year, my back to school nightmares would begin. I would have these night, literally, I would have these nightmares where the kids were there and I wasn't ready. And my biggest worry was the bus list. The kids had to take a bus home and there were like about 12 bus uh, routes. And so I had little kids. I had kindergartners, first grade or sometime and then second grade. I had to make sure they got on the right bus. And that used to really worry me worry me a lot. But you know what? The school nurse in our school rarely worried. One day it was snowing, we had to drive home and in the snow, and I said to her, I'm so worried, are you worried? She said, no, not worried. I'm like, you're not worried? She says, no, I always give my worries to God. I just say a prayer, I tell him what I'm worried about, and he handles it for me. And I said, really? I wish I could be more like that. So this week, when you start to worry about school, all you have to do is say a little prayer and give it to God. And what he might do for you is put a little voice in your head, it's okay, you're all right. Or he might send a friend to sit with you at lunchtime. <laughs> no, down, sit. He might, you know, he might send a friend to sit with you at lunchtime or you might be, he might send you to sit with a friend at lunchtime. So God is gonna help you out, and all you have to do is ask for it. All right, and that's what we, that was the, our Bible theme today, right? God is a friend that we can trust. All right, let's pray. Today, dear God, today I give my worries to you. I trust you will help with my worries and my fears. Now let's say the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. All right, let's go upstairs. We have fish to be made. Let us pray. Lord God, let the words of your servant's mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing in your sight. O Lord, our rock and redeemer, through Christ, amen. It's great seeing so many people out there today coming in through the rain. This is great. Scripture reading today is on page 100, I mean, page 573, for those that want to read along. That'll be Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel for all its iniquities. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
that God would welcome me into this mystery. Say, take this bread, take this wine, now the simple may divine for any to receive. By your mercy we come to your table. By your grace you are making us faithful. Lord, we remember you. And remembrance leads us to worship. And as we worship you, our worship leads to communion. We respond to your invitation. We remember you. See his body, his blood, know that he has overcome every trial we will face and none too lost to be saved none too broken or ashamed all are welcome in this place by your mercy we come to your table by your grace you are making us faithful Lord, we remember you, and remembrance leads us to worship, and as we worship you, our worship leads to communion, we respond to your invitation. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored. By your grace, you are making us faithful. Lord, we remember you. And remembrance leads us to worship. And as we worship you, our worship leads to communion. We respond to your invitation. We remember you. We pick up today where we left off last week, back in the sixth chapter of John. Listen again for the word of the Lord. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, 
and they shall be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh." Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sorry, gets me when the cross makes its first appearance. <laughs> so my, uh, it's an interesting time in the life of the McKinnon family. I have a son that on Thursday will be starting seventh grade. And I have a daughter who on Thursday will start teaching seventh grade science for the first time. I love seventh graders. They will speak the truth to you. I did youth ministry for 15 years, and I remember teaching a seventh grade Sunday school class one morning in New Bern, which was my first call. We were talking about the importance of living the Christian life. I'd been there a couple of years. The kids knew me well, so I posed the question to the group, why do people call me a Christian? Thinking this would lead to a discussion about what Christians were. Yet after a moment's pause, one of the boys finally said, maybe it's because they don't know you. (laughs) Welcome to seventh grade. That is where we continue to be, though, in our walk through the sixth chapter of John. People don't know who Jesus is. In verse 51, Jesus reveals the end game. Other shadows of the cross will appear as the story continues. But today, we find Jesus is in the middle of teaching the crowd that has followed him since he fed them, the feeding of the 5,000. The people, though, do not understand what Jesus is doing, yet their bellies were full. They had their fill of bread, and that was enough. Jesus uses this as an opportunity to begin teaching a deeper spiritual truth. In verse 35, Jesus declares himself as the bread of life. This is a bold statement because it is making, uh, because in making it, Jesus both states his divine identity and his role as our spiritual sustenance. Some people, if not many, are embracing a lower carb diet these days and bread is not what it used to be. But for the power of bread as a metaphor to not be lost on us, we must think of it as bread in the context of the first century, Jewish life. Bread was literally life. Bread was the staple. Bread was essential for survival. So Jesus chooses this most common element of all human life to describe his essential role in our lives. As Presbyterians, we share with others in the Reformed tradition by emphasizing that Christ alone is the source of life and salvation. Jesus isn't just offering full bellies, physical sustenance. He is offering so much more, eternal life, a life of deep, ongoing communion with God that begins in this world and carries on through eternity. There are many challenges to people's acceptance of Jesus' claim, rightly so. Jesus claims to be the bread that came down from heaven, but they knew Jesus. They knew Jesus. He's Joseph's son. Jesus was a familiar person in their community who had a role. He was a carpenter. He was from a poor family. They had watched him grow up. Go to seventh grade in Nazareth. Son Joseph, son of Joseph the carpenter. Now he is claiming to be God. 
I can hear the local buzz. Who does he think he is? Joseph and Mary have raised him better than that. They were completely unable to understand how someone who was a carpenter and who had come from a poor home could possibly be a special messenger from God. Familiarity can be a stumbling block to sincere faith. In my experience, there is an undeniable tension between familiarity and faith. Sometimes our familiarity with Jesus through church traditions and Bible stories and cultural portrayals and movies like The Chosen and The Last Temptation of Christ can actually hinder our ability to see Jesus as he truly is, the incarnate word of God, our Savior. Jesus, in spite of the people's doubts, explains that no one can come to him unless drawn by God the Father. This reflects the Reformed belief in God's sovereignty and salvation. It is not about our efforts or our righteousness. It is about God's initiative. It is about God's grace. We love God because God first loved us. This is a comforting and humbling truth. We are not alone in our journey of faith. God is actively drawing us closer to God's self. Our role is to respond in faith and in trust. Jesus repeats that those who believe in him will have eternal life. He contrasts the manna eaten by the Israelites, which sustained life day by day, temporarily, with the living bread that grants eternal life. Jesus, through his sacrificial death and resurrection, becomes the source of eternal life for all who believe. Through the sacrament of communion, we remember and partake of Christ's body and blood, receiving spiritual nourishment and the promise of eternal life. So the question then is, what does it mean to feed on Christ in daily life? How can we incorporate spiritual disciplines like prayer, scripture reading, and communal worship to stay connected to the bread of life? I had a seminary professor who would constantly challenge us to examine what she referred to as our spiritual hunger. What is your spiritual hunger? Are you seeking Christ for who Christ is or for what you think Christ can do for you? Or are you seeking Jesus for a deeper life-giving relationship? There continues today a tendency for some to seek Jesus for the wrong reasons. Routine, tradition, political or financial gain, insurance for the afterlife, all these things rather than a genuine spiritual encounter. We as a congregation must always be moving beyond a surface level understanding of Jesus and seek a deeper relationship with him through our worship, our study, and our mission. Jesus is the bread of life, the one who satisfies our deepest needs and leads us to eternal life. God, help us embrace this truth, to be drawn closer to Jesus and to find our true nourishment in him so that we can share the bread of life with others. I was deeply moved when I ran across a poem by Maggie Gross this week that speaks profoundly to the hunger of the world and the need for us to be bearers of the bread of life. I will leave you with it. One little girl's words that speak for those who hunger in our world. To you may, <clears throat> our world, to you may be companions in Christ. You warm and wonderful hearers of the Christ bread. I pray that this poem, you might know and understand just how special you are and just how important each of your lives is for Christ. It's called Maggie's Poem. 
Do you know, do you understand that you represent Jesus to me? Do you know, do you understand that when you treat me with gentleness, it raises the question in my mind that maybe God is gentle too. Maybe God isn't someone who laughs when I hurt. Do you know, do you understand that when you listen to my question and you do not laugh, I think, what if Jesus is interested in me too? Do you know, do you understand that when I hear you talk about arguments and conflicts and scars from the past, that I think maybe I am just a regular person instead of a bad, no good little girl who deserves abuse. If you care, I think maybe God cares. And then there's this flame of hope that burns inside me for a while. I'm afraid to breathe because it might go out and I will once again have nothing but a God who mocks and laughs and ignores me. Do you know, do you understand that your words are God's words? Your face, God's face to someone like me. Please be who you say you are. Please don't let this be another trick. Please let this be real. Please. Do you know? Do you understand who you are? Amen. Please stand if you're comfortable doing so and join me in reading the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
please be seated. Let us pray. Gracious God, we pause before you, God, beyond all our imagination. We have no clue what you have in store for each of our lives, but we look forward uh, to each new day with excitement because we have an opportunity to live it in your service. So, Lord, we pray that we recognize the sustenance of our lives, that we have baskets overflowing so that we might go out and share the good news, the bread that we have found that has satisfied our hungers with those who are searching. Lord, we pray for those with specific needs this day, those who are in need of employment, those are, who are in need of recovery, uh, those who are in need of surgeries. We pray that you bring healing in all instances, that that might be your will. But in each case, that your abiding presence be with those who are in times of tumult in their lives. Lord, as we begin a new school year, we do pray for our students and our teachers, and our parents. Uh, we pray that you might be present um, in their education so that they grow uh, to learn their role in the world. And we thank you so much for those that dedicate their lives to that task. Lord, we thank you for the Olympics, for a time when countries can come together in peace and friendship, for sport, for those that excel at the physical gifts that you have given them. We thank you that it gives us a respite from the troubles and violence of our world. And we pray for those, Lord, who can get no escape from that daily reality in their lives. We pray that you uh, speed the day where peace uh, will cover the lands. Help us to be an effective witness, Lord, in our lives and as a church in our city, in our country, and in our world. Thank you for the ministry you give us to do. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. The church has different ways to receive your pledges, tithes, and offerings. If you're worshiping with us in the sanctuary today, offering plates are located by the doors as you exit the sanctuary. Please drop your offering in the plate. If you're worshiping with us from home today, you can support us through the website by clicking the Give button on the home page, through Venmo, by searching for FPCOKC, or you can mail your contribution to the church. Thank you for your support of the ministry of First Presbyterian Church. Now let us return to God the offerings of our life and the gifts of the earth. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal, but store for up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Let us worship God with our pledges, tithes, and offerings.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts. With them, we offer ourselves to your service and dedicate our lives to the care and redemption of all that you have made. We ask your blessing also on our purple bag food offering. Bless those who fill them and those who will receive them. For the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, go now in peace, knowing in the goodness of God you were born. In God's mercy you've been kept all the days of your life, and as a sign of God's never-failing grace, each life has been redeemed for a purpose. So I charge you to go out from this place and continue living in the midst of God's purpose for your life. And as you do, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make the light of God's knowledge shine upon you and grant you peace this day and forevermore. Amen. Oh,